Now, in our fifth and final section, we will talk about the fetal growth restriction that usually can occur as a result of preeclampsia or hypertension. So we will talk about how, uh, what are the clinical features of uh, fetal growth restriction, what are the causes and pathophysiology and risk factors and management of fetal growth restriction. So fetal growth restriction is a failure of fetus to achieve its genetic growth potential. That's fetal growth restriction, restricted growth of the fetus. The clinical features how, uh, on, of the fetal growth restriction or uh, fetal growth retardation, usually the fetus has absence of buccal fat, old man look. So they have absence of buccal fat. There is wrinkling of the skin because of the lack of underneath fat and there is old man appearance. Poor breast bud formation, a thin umbilical cord, relatively large and thin hands and legs compared to the body, loose fold of skin in the nape of skin, axilla, interscapular area and groins, large head, large and wide anterior fontanelle, and anxious and hyper alert infant, long fingernails, loose dry and easy peelable skin, small scaphoid abdomen, poor skeletal muscle mass and subcutaneous fat. So all these are the findings and features of fetus who is not fully grown and uh, restricted growth. So fetal growth restriction can cause complications and affects all these different uh, structures. Etiology is mainly reduced fetal growth potential, sometimes due to congenital abnormalities like uh, aneuploidies, trisomy 18, single gene defects, Sickles syndrome, structural abnormalities, renal agenesis, and intrauterine infections. Maternal factors usually we have like undernutrition, uh, hypoxia or decreased supply of oxygen, drugs like alcohol, cigarettes, cocaine. Placental factors decrease placental for, uh, perfusion, whether it's utero-placental or feto-placental perfusion, decreased perfusion of the placenta can lead to intrauterine growth restriction. Pathophysiology is usually uh, we have um, placental damage causing intrauterine growth restriction at 28 weeks. So placental damage is important cause of uh, the intrauterine growth restriction, usually at about 28 weeks. The different tests that can be performed is umbilical artery Doppler, baby's blood flow to the placenta, absent and diastolic flow. Here, if you see, there is absent and diastolic flow on umbilical artery Doppler. Biochemistry, there is protein in the mother's blood. Uh, increased alpha fetoprotein measured between 12 to 20 weeks. Morphology, the appearance of the placenta, usually there are areas of damage in the placenta. Uterine artery Doppler, mother's blood flow to the placenta, lower blood flow and nourishment to the baby. So all these are the findings that are present uh, in placental damage at about 28th week of gestation. There is decreased diastolic um, uh, flow and there is increased alpha-14 protein level, alpha-fetoprotein, and there is area of damage in the placenta. 
pregnancy is at risk of fetal growth restriction depending on the age of the mother high altitude levels any infections preeclampsia smoking under nutrition all these can cause intrauterine growth restriction and mainly the cause of this intrauterine growth restriction is effect of all these factors on the placenta and decrease placental insufficiency causes decrease uh, supply of nutrients to the fetus that causes growth restriction and then the management of intrauterine growth restriction usually suspected fetal growth restriction if it's less than 38 weeks gestation if it's less than 24 usually how we manage it deliver if maternal status indicates otherwise repeat sonography so if the condition of the mother or the status is not good then usually before 24 weeks also delivery is indicated if it's more than 24 weeks but less than 34 weeks then again we evaluate the mother we evaluate the fetus and then if we can consider the delivery if uh, uh, if uh, reverse end diastolic flow if there is non uh, reassuring stress test present if no indication for immediate delivery then we uh, wait and do regular antepartum uh, uh, observation and then only perform the delivery when the fetus reaches the stage of viability but if the stage is above 34 weeks but less than 38 weeks again the same evaluation is performed and if the uh, condition is not good then we uh, uh, delivery is done but in condition when the fetus are uh, not immediate risk to the mother or the baby it's better to wait until the viable stage reaches so there should be no risks to the baby and no complications to the mother so management basically depend on the um, condition of the mother and the condition of the fetus if the maternal uh, if the uh, fetus is good and it's the, no, uh, the uh, non-stress test and biophysical profile uh, gives the indication and toco cardiotocography that uh, that the condition of the baby is uh, normal or well then it's better to re let the pregnancy reach to 37 to 38 weeks of gestation before the delivery so that was all about the management thank you for watching scardia.com